So chapter eight is about uh, converting between different chemical quantities again. Um, it is in essence asking the question, how much of something can I make? Or if I want to make something, how much of the other reactants do I need to make it? So we just finished looking at chemical reactions. Uh, but some things that are, are sort of essential skills or key skills for being successful in this chapter, we're going to review it in this first part of the videos. So we'll start with converting between grams and moles of, su of a substance. So we're going to calculate the mass of, right, here's the mass of, 35.4 moles of carbon dioxide, and then I gave you the molar mass, and what you'll find in uh, a lot of the problems from this chapter is the molar masses will be given, since we kind of started mastering that at the very end of chapter four. It, I feel like I can give you some of them just sort of speed these reactions up for you. So we'll, we'll go like this. Let's calculate the mass of 35.4 moles of carbon dioxide. So mass is what I'm looking for. In particular, I'll be looking for grams, and I have to set it up so the units cancel. So I start with 35.40 moles of CO2, and then I'm going to use my railroad tracks, and then the 44 goes at the bottom, and the one mole goes at the top. And then I'll get out my handy-dandy calculator and say 35.4 divided by 44.01, and that gives me 0. Uh, zero, sorry, 0 0.8044. So 0 0.80436. This was gra um, grams, and it has four sig figs, so 0 0.8044 grams. Uh, if you wanted to calculate the mass of 50.2 moles of copper, and th if this was the molar mass, copper 2 phosphate, again, it's exactly the same setup. So go ahead and set that up, and we'll uh, look to see how you did on both B and C, and we'll compare answers. So I uh, finished the uh, conversions for parts B and C, and what you'll see for part B... That's not weird, but anyways, uh, 50.2 moles, it's 380.571 grams per mole. I set it up so my units will cancel like this, and then I'll end up with 1.91 times 10 to the fourth grams, and then round it to three significant figures, that's 1.91 times 10 to the fourth grams. All right, now, for the moles of CO2, um, I was given the grams of CO2. I was also given the molar mass CO2 in the first problem, so I just used that. Uh, I wanted the grams to cancel, so I set it up so that the grams were at the bottom. I canceled the grams. I was left with moles of CO2 over here, and so that was 2.1654, and then I rounded that to 2.17 because there's three significant figures in this number, so I wanted three significant figures in this uh, number. Now, we also need to review the idea of formula ratios, and what we'll be doing in this chapter is actually using uh, ratios of compounds and chemical equations in the same way that you may remember using formula ratios in calculations before. So, in this first one, it says calculate the moles of oxygen and 2.53 grams of carbon dioxide. So, in m most of these problems. These are two-step problems. We're going to get grams of CO2. We're going to convert that to moles of CO2. And then we use the formula ratio from the chemical formula of CO2. We know there's two moles of oxygen for every one mole of CO2. And so then that'll allow us to get to the moles of oxygen. Okay, so let's write that out. We're going to say moles of oxygen, that's 2.53 grams of CO2. And there's two conversion steps, so I know that it's going to look something like this. The first step is to go to moles, and so I'm going to cancel grams to get to moles. So it's 44.01 grams of CO2 for every one mole of CO2. Now, again, that 44 was given to you earlier in the first part of this uh, uh, lecture. 
and then I write two moles of oxygen for every one mole of CO2. So now the grams of CO2 will cancel. Well, let's change colors here like that and then the moles of CO2 will cancel and then that'll leave me with moles of oxygen and if I bring up the calculator it's 2.53 divided by 44.01 times 2 and that gives me 0 0.11497 moles of oxygen. And then um, I have three sig figs given in the first number. And so I'll round this to 0 0.115 moles of oxygen like that. Okay. So I want you to do the same thing to calculate the moles of uh, copper and copper 2 phosphate. Remember that that's the same compound that we used up here, right? And so this is the formula, so you'll need to pull the formula ratio out of that uh, chemical formula. So I'll pause it here. Uh, you go ahead and try to uh, work out the answer, and then when you start the video, I'll have the answer up on the screen for you. So here's that solution uh, worked out for you. And so, uh, again, going from 17.8 grams to moles of something in the formula, it's a two-step process, right? So 17.8 grams goes to, divided by 380.571, we do that to get to the moles of C, uh, copper 2 phosphate. And then the moles of copper 2 phosphate will cancel this way, and that'll leave me with three moles of copper at the top. So I go ahead and run the calculation of 17.81 divided by 380.571 times three moles of copper. And that leaves me with 0 0.1403 moles of copper, which has three significant figures because of the three significant figures there. And then I uh, rounded it to 0 0.140 moles of copper. So the next thing to do is to balance an equation, right? And I've got one balanced here for you. This is probably a more complicated one. And then I want to go over and review a couple of things about the balanced chemical equation. Um, the numbers right, that give us mass balance, these numbers are called stoichiometric coefficients. So 2 is the stoichiometric coefficient for the C3H5N compound. 13 is for O2, 6 is for CO2, et cetera. So that's what these, these numbers are called. And you'll see that term all the time in uh, the text of the book. So I just wanted to make sure we got that out. And then we have what are called now reaction ratios. And these are like mole ratios that we get from chemical formulas. But if you look at the mole ratio or the reaction ratio for this compound to this one, right? I know the reaction ratio is 2 moles of C3H5N is equal to 6 moles of CO2. Now what that statement means is that for every two moles of the first compound, I can produce six moles of carbon dioxide. Now, if I didn't have two moles, right, the ratio stays the same. So let's say I had one mole, then I would only produce three moles of CO2. So this reaction ratio, I typically want you to write it directly from uh, the chemical equation. And this gives us the relationships in a mass balanced equation between uh, different reactants or reactants in products or different products and all kinds of combinations in there, okay? So what's the reaction ratio for H2O and NO2? And I'll give you a few moments to write that out. And when you restart, I'll have it on the screen for you. So there's the reaction ratio for H2O and NO2, and it's 10 H2Os for every two NO2s. And so if I had five H2Os, I could only make one NO2. If I produced four moles of NO2, I know to get that, I would have had to use 20 moles of H2O. 
So this is the review. This is sort of the main skills that you need from the previous chapters in order to be successful in this chapter.